Ain't pick seals up the back. You don't drive it. Oh, I can drive it. Yeah, I want to hear it. Shit. Same. Ha. It's good to be back. Stickers. Look at all the Goodwood stickers on these things. This thing's been up there a couple of times. This one's been up there a lot. Look, we got the hair with the whole way stacked up right there the hood. Yeah, lucky you got this cafe. Yeah. No, your cafe's lucky. Oh. Somebody paint the Kim Block thing for you or? Yeah, a fan painted it for like this tribute. Like it's so freaking sick, man. And then, um, yeah, he gifted it to me at the end of the festival. Yeah, pretty cool. He knows how close I was, so. Hang it in my shop somewhere. Yeah, just go find the wall. Kim Block from the shop. Sierra Tango Echo. It's a young fella that did that. That's freaking incredible. Look at the detail, and that's what a spray can. Spray cans and just cardboard for masks. Look at that. You know what's underneath that? Sir Jack Stewart. He didn't have any other timber, so he painted straight over the top of it. This is not just a merch cap that was actually uh, given to us by Ken Block, but this was actually the one he was wearing at Goodwood. He had sold out of merch. So this one, as worn by KB, Thank you, brother. Much love. Thank you, Echo, for the artwork. Unreal. Did even put it up there or up on that one? So we're talking about obviously putting it up on one of the big walls in my shop. The problem is with it being in my shop and the actual workshop side of it, it's gonna be so far away. And because it is so detailed, it actually just looks like a photo. That's gonna be the perfect wall. That's at the height where people can actually see that it's a painting gives me an opportunity as well to showcase all the times I've had with the legend Ken Block and the photos that people have captured of us. Here comes the Rennie. Actually went pretty bloody good this photo. So, so we've done a little swap out here. So we've got the Renesis RX-8 Block that was injected with EFI hardware, obviously custom manifold, and then the Renesis you see has the three pipes that exhaust out the side plates. I feel like we've had, in three days, like different cars just on this hoist. The RX-8 was on here, the taxi was on here, uh, Lynx MX-5 was on here. The taxi was half done, you can see the wheel's still half hanging. <laughs> so, uh, Lynx cars good to go. Uh, RX8, it's quite a lot of work. Yeah, not too crazy a change here for the engine swap because obviously we're just swapping out 13B for 13B. Um, but it's old school going against what was in there was Renesis. So Renesis is very different uh, exhaust wise. Um, you can see because the exhaust on a Renesis, this kind of looks like it's for a 20B, but Renesis exhausts come out the side plates. So quite unique. We kind of went against the grain and wanted to prove that 
you know, well the Renesis is like the most attainable, easiest way to get into the Rotary community, get an RX-8. Not just with this Renesis, but we ran a Renesis in the Rumble Stadium truck and we won the New Zealand Nationals out here um, against eight, 900 horsepower trucks. And it's a super reliable engine, produces good power, a lot of RPM. We went against the grain and did the Renesis conversion into this. Mainly because I wanted to tease this, of having three pipes and people thinking it was going to be a 20B, when actually it was just a Renesis. But now that we've ended up having uh, old school 13B PP back in the family, which came in the Thirsty Wagon, um, I know we've got a lot of projects on the go, but... This is pretty straightforward. It was an injected setup as well, so we're going back to the carbureted, just a Weber, so there'll be one fuel line, one big fuel pump, a little bit of wiring to do, to pull out all the old ECU and stuff that was in this, um, and that'll be a good turnkey package for something else, another future project. Always got to think about future projects and what you can use. It's gonna get rowdy. Ready for a big burnout as soon as this thing's in there. As well. Oh, wow. Far out. It's a super lightweight, tiny little flywheel. It's going to make the thing nice and pipey. So yeah, you can see what flywheel was on the wagon. That's pretty much a freaking Series 4, Series 5 clutch and flywheel. Big, heavy, mellow puff, so. Quarter of the weight of the other one. My job is always make shit low oh. and loud. Alex, this just job is just make stuff fast. Could have actually put this on for that freaking mode. Yeah, right. It's sort of what I was thinking. That's what I should have done, so I'm just going to undo all those bolts and just did. Clean up after a shit pit. <laughs> <laughs> do we put the scatter blanket on? No. This is ridiculous, mate. Oh, I don't think you've got that rule anymore. No. Are you in drag like that? It's my Ooh. specialty, mate. A bit of bust through this one. So we've got these new seats that we're releasing with NRG. So I wanted to design like a retro bucket so that you can see they've got the eyelets. Uh, we've done like the MM, similar to like the RX-3 with a bit of an old 70s um, logo. These ones were done in like glitter gold because Link was gonna put them in one of his rides, but I'm pinching it and I'm putting it in there. So I'll probably end up painting the back the same factory chestnut brown. But I just wanted to see how they how they feel and look. Oh, well, and then we're doing a steering wheel as well. So we've done a few custom steering wheels with VNRG. So it doesn't matter if you've got an old Mazda, you've got an old Toyota, a Nissan, whatever it is, we'll have something that'll be able to suit. And then the rest of the interior I pulled out because I'm just gonna notch the back because I reckon there's about another 10, 10 millimeters in ride height I can get if I just cut the floor out. So another excuse to get the four inch grinder out on a RX3. <laughs> It's going to see if whether the wagon exhaust is actually going to line up with the coupe. So I know the wheelbase between the RX3 coupe, the wagon and the sedan. Wheelbase and everything's identical. Um, but we're about to find out what the floor pan is like. 76. Oh, 76. Up to 76 is the flat plan after yeah. that. That shows that this car is actually uh, 76. 
it's registered here as a 77, only because of the year that obviously it gets registered. But yeah, which makes it actually a more valuable RX3. So this one was probably the hardest car I've cut into because it was an immaculate RX3 coupe and then to chop into the fenders and wide body or the rear end, you can see the underside of this car. This was a Thailand car actually, so the car we found in Thailand. Um, it's the perks of my job of traveling the world and meeting the rotary community in all these different countries is you get to find a lot of cool freaking rotors. Yeah, this car's got Hilux, Hilux rear end, which is pretty straightforward. Um, just reset leaves and lowering box. We've got disc brakes on the back, so we've modified the discs, uh, which are Series 4, Series 5. Custom drive shaft, a few other bits. You've got to have a drive shaft loop for the skirt and stuff here in New Zealand. Oh, is it a hump from the floor? Sort of thinking that might be the deal, so we need to cut them there. That's cool. Okay, so as I was just talking about, that the earlier and 808s, 808s have a big hump in the floor. Clearly where this went up and that ain't gonna work. <laughs> Which means a little bit of a little bit of fab work. A little bit of fab work. That's cool. But I want to run this die tech like old school. Okay. The original part that was on the wagon is these okay. old die tech mufflers, so thanks for So he's just got to remake that as well. Yeah, that's sweet as. Like that. So he can just come straight to that, come, come forward a little bit. Yeah, there. That's it. And then he just goes from there to there, using what we've got. That's right. Another excuse to get the four inch grinder in the welder out. <laughs> yeah, so it's not, it's not going to be just a one day swap. Unfortunately, it's a little bit to do. We've got the clutch because we've used, we've still got the RX8 gearbox. This is the RX8. Uh, box of so the bell housing slightly different to what was on this motor um, because the rear plate on the old school blocks different than the Renesis so and we'll just change the clutch slaves but the main thing the brackets and the cross member up the front it runs the old school front cover bolted straight up you can see the front here we've modified to run so it's RX3 cross member but then it's got series 4 series 5 struts and brakes Yeah, so we get, we're just going to cut that bigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so then you're, you're getting a bigger exhaust because it's yeah. pointing all the way to here. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work fucking nice. So there's your whole thing, doesn't it? Has a scanner, but also has paper. Right, like, you know, <laughs> does it get any more accurate? Probably not. Yeah. And then we'll be back. Phew! Having a freaking Ryan next door, the skill set, the freaking computer, 3D scanner, whatever, whatever you need, mate. So what we're doing because of the bell housing is different and that clutch slave, the stock one, doesn't fit and we don't want to do an external oil filter so we're just making a little L bracket. It's pretty simple but way nicer if Ryan just whacks it out because it'll literally take him a couple of minutes. Close. It'll work. See? There's plenty of room. Oh that's, yeah, let's that's how this that goes. Fuck it. Oh, wall cooler. We'll just pull that wall cooler off the bottom of that. Right. Two of them in here. Two of them second hand. Whole car's yeah. both second hand, mate. I've totally got some hose here, which I can see right in front of me. Dash yeah. ten. X Games, that was when X Games had rally. Um, I was here for this one. Yeah, that's right. So that was building this car. I, I skived off from the workshop. We had to build this car in like four weeks. Ken had been here that weekend, 
and just hanging out with being out on the track doing go-karting a bunch of a whole bunch of stuff and he's like bro you literally have everything at the fingertips from home except the rally course he then called me on the tuesday and he's like bro we're freaking testing 10 minutes from your shop so that was at mataburo forest just down the road so i told the boys i was just boosting off for lunch and that was us we went in the went in the cosworths so the old school wrc cosworths that brought down to new zealand So it's a two liter motor from the 90s. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I think they actually let us even run on potentially a slightly bigger. Yeah, because Kiwis love noise. They do. And speed. They do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no rules, bro. No rules. Just go as fast as you can. <laughs> Dangerous. Like, I'm telling you, it's like a reason. One round of. Yep. Y'all good for it? See where we're at. Yeah, it's just good. Epic. And then yeah, he's just doing some uh, testing. We actually blew the gearbox. As you do when you put your mates in the car, you always go 110. So this was good wood, banging doors. Always good times, man. Yeah, more ride alongs with King. Ken at the time there, he was founder and still uh, owner of DC Shoes and this event actually, no actually it wasn't this event, it was a year before he gave me a set of DCs, like he, he just came up with these DC race boots, big puffy things and uh, I just thought they were the coolest things, I had massive baggy race suits, big puffy shoes, big puffy tongue DCs and um, yeah I literally wrapped the whole rear quarter of my car with a massive DC logo, I was that pumped on the, a free set of DCs from Ken Bok. That's how much of an inspiration he was. So. See the friendship we had with Ken and um, Reminis, such a GC. So Ken before our friendship was, he was such an inspiration to me because it wasn't about who had the fastest car and the biggest budget team. You could literally go out there and put on a show and didn't have to be standing on top of the box, you know, so um, he was a huge inspiration for me, especially in four wheels, to see what he was doing with all the Jim Carners um, and just doing unique stuff. So, for you know, definitely a legend and a pioneer in the four wheel realm of motorsports. So, the day before he passed, we were uh, going to do a talk show at Tokyo Auto Salon. We do it every year at Tokyo Auto Salon. It's always pretty funny because Ken never knew that much Japanese. Um, but they're always good times. Kawabata, also Toyo Tires teammate. Um, would be on the panel as well. So good banter, good times. I always have my birthday, it's January the 10th, and I'm always in Japan for Tokyo Auto Salon uh, with Ken. So yeah, last year he, he lit the candles on my birthday cake, so not many people can claim that. It's pretty freaking cool. Alec over there making a lot of noise. Now, now Ken's gonna have to listen to the noise of road trees every day. Times. Actually, where we started, where we where we ended the other day was the oil cooler. I don't think I can see, but I don't know. I don't even know why I dicked around for like an hour making little brackets to make that old. Just because it was old and genuine, I'm like. I really wanted to use that oil cooler. And then I'm thinking, man, we've got the PWR stuff like on the shelf, the same as what I'm running in all the race cars. So we just, after all that, just got one of those and made up some nice little brackets. And so it's actually got a really nice looking oil cooler and one that works better than anything else. So yeah, me just wanted to keep it nostalgic. We, were, we looked at the exhaust and we thought it'd be as simple as cutting that out and putting it on, which we did. 
I mean, it was like five millimeters off the ground. Ryan ended up fabricating an entire new exhaust right from the headers, so stainless headers all the way through, twin to the diff. Uh, it goes under the diff, he's tucked it up. The rear, I wanted to keep the Ditex, so the Ditex mufflers. Are, that, that's old school, just to run the Ditex. So it's almost like it's the era of truck boilers, then super traps, which we've got on the RX2, and then the Ditex. And then, yeah, they're all like, a very distinct sound, like you can tell which muff, like, for me, when it comes to old school rotaries, it has to be one of those three to have that real good sound. And they're so distinctive. Yeah, this thing is nearly complete. Just in time for its reveal. Look, we've got it on the back parcel tray right there. This is the Hot Wheels release. So, I mean, we revealed this car a year ago, but now we're revealing it with obviously the new motor and stuff in it. And this is the new Hot Wheels, which will be on shelves any minute now. Of all the Hot Wheels stuff we've done, I think the craziest thing for me is the fact that I've got the Rotang fan, like the bombings that we used to do. Yeah, back in the 90s, there's all the different, you know, Rotaholics, Rotan, Rota Act, uh, Rota Life, Rotang Clan, like you know, all the different rotary groups. Now, Rotang Clan is on all these Hot Wheels I do. So it's crazy that this thing that we started, 1993, man, I was 13 years old, just turning 14, and, um, yeah, getting into rotaries and we started the Rotan clan. Driving around with no licenses. Got myself in a lot of trouble. But I'm out of I'm out of all that trouble now. And now we've got Rotan clan as freaking official Hot Wheels look. And then what's cool about this set is Kawato-san of TCV Magic in Japan. So it's got his four rotor R35, the Liberty Walk R35 from Formula Drift as well, with a cool little comic cartoon style transporter. So really cool set, but this is the best because I got to design it myself too. Well, we're actually, we're building a K100 right now, which I just went and checked on yesterday. Yeah, full repaint, blasting the chassis back, blast all the cab back, so the boys at ITS. Patty's been painting my stuff forever, um, and this is by far the most mission of a job, because the old school K100, the cabs are alloy, but all the rivets are steel, and so they all corrode behind the rivet. Sorry, Patty. I know that this job has been a freaking nightmare, but it's only really worth it because some of Ash will be another vehicle we can reveal with everything else. Yeah, I get to drive the RX3. Shit, I'm, I'm like meant to be going down the grid up for top 16. Thank <laughs> you.